Welcome to our film which is celebrating 80 years of Woodhays Primary School in Sale. During that period we've actually only had four head teachers, myself being one of them. Um, I've been here uh, for over 22 years. My name was Laura Daniels. It's now Laura Roberts, Mrs Roberts. Uh, and I'm so proud to think that I've been here during a period of immense growth and immense change. Over that time, when I first began, I was the year six teacher and there were only 220 children in the whole school. We under underwent a big refurbishment which opened in 2011 and uh, we are now 485 children, so we still try and keep our family atmosphere. Uh, Mr Hadfield, who was the head teacher before me, just before he left in 1996, we planted at the front of the school uh, a time capsule which is due to be opened in 2020. <laughs> Originally in 1938 when the school first opened, this was what was known as an open school. So these classrooms along here, we then just had, it was literally to the open air. And these were outdoor, uh, outdoor doors. And that philosophy that children needed fresh air and sunshine, we've almost come full circle to realise that again. Uh, in 2011, we began a building project that took um, about 18 months. So this middle bit of the E that's not here, we've got, we've got the outside and here, very yin and yang, the old building and then the new building here. And in the centre here, it's created a centre, a very central, peaceful section of the school, which we will go and have a look at in a moment. Um, we have classrooms from 1949, a photograph here, and in 2008. What the architect did, he retained the old classrooms, and the old classrooms still have the parquet flooring, um, the original parquet flooring, and actually still have the original desks, because the year five and six children love to have their own desks, so we've kept those as well. That's a bit of a privilege for going into year five and six. Let's go and have a look at the Zen area. <laughs> sound of our wind chimes in our Zen area. Not many schools have got a Zen area, I don't think, but this became a dream that became a reality. We often say at Woodhays, nothing happens unless first a dream. Have vision. And when the new school opened, we were approached by Trafford with a budget, and they said, what would you like to do at the centre in this garden? And so I said to the gentleman who was dressed in a suit, I'd love a Japanese garden with a bridge, with a water feature, with a yin and yang, everything's recycled, um, artworks from indigenous people, and his face never changed, and he walked away. Two weeks later he came back to school with the most incredible design. He said, I've always wanted to do something like this. And it was his dream as well and he made it a reality. All the furniture is recycled from Tatton Park. We have a symbolic yin and yang. We have a ginkgo tree, which is one of the oldest trees known to man, which has no uh, veins on the leaves. We have the zen area where the children from reception to year six can play in the sand and relax. We have musical instruments out here, and it's a very solid, area that I believe keeps the peace for the whole school. Ten years after 9-11, we had Pam Evans, the creator of the Peace Marker Project, who came to school and she planted a peace pole. May peace prevail on earth in the four languages associated with the school and in Braille on the side, may peace prevail on earth as well. That was very, very symbolic. We also have a care, and we start to begin to talk to the children about loss and remembering, and that how people on the tops of mountains often make piles of stones, remembering someone that they may have lost and that they valued. Welcome to our area of peace.
When the garden first opened, uh, we were literally blessed <laughs> by the Buddhist nuns from the um, Buddhist temple in Old Trafford who came along and performed uh, a blessing. The children do Buddhism in year three and this was Buddhism brought to life. Uh, they chanted, they walked around our Zen area and they were blessing and they began to chant and as they began to move the children without any instruction whatsoever just followed them and echoed the chant. It was most beautiful to see. In July 2017 we were very honoured to be contacted by um, a Buddhist monk who was three down from the Dalai Lama, Abe Rinpoche and he asked to visit the school and again he came into this beautiful area he was so impressed he wore his impressive yellow hat um, connected to his dynasty and again blessed this area the children love the story of the laughing buddha and we've said in assembly that if you rub his tummy you get good luck so i'll have a little go myself and you can see he's quite shiny on his tummy the vision for our Zen area was to purchase beautiful pieces of art from many different cultures. This brightly coloured sun is from Mexico. If you could see what I see, you'd lose your breath for sure. You are the perfect replications and the ones that I adore. This is our world, we're all different, we're all the same and this whole statement about our world is the basis of the ethos of Woodhouse Primary School and it's part of our mission statement. Many years ago when uh, we began our environmental work we noticed something about the uh, makeup of the children within the school began to change. We began to get children from different cultures and different faith backgrounds. And when we approached the families as to why they were choosing our school above other schools in the area, it was because of our environment was so, um, so appealing, but also the background to their faiths was care for your environment. And they all realised the importance uh, for the children for our future is for them to care for the individuals around them, for the animals around them and for their world. This particular mural was painted by one of our teaching assistants, um, Aisha Chowdhury, in 2005, and it represents the characters from the RE Today magazine. And it's the six major faiths, and it also um, it shows the symbols for their faiths, and it also tells them about the holy book and about the place of worship. And nothing you say could ever seem too crazy, too weird, or too wild. Cause the nectar of this world is sweet, still it hardly compares to the champagne of love that is found in an infinite world. My name is Frida Eden and I've been a governor at Woodhays Primary School for 30 years and also been involved with the environmental teaching here at the school for 20 years, since 1997. When I started here at Woodhays, I was working at lunch times and the head then, Mr Hadfield, asked me if I could help to make the back of the school look a bit more interesting because in those days, um, there was absolutely nothing here at all. It was grass, tarmac, no seating, no play area, nothing really. It looked very drab and unappetising. Then, luckily, a parent said, 
how about some murals? Those would look nice outside. So we had a competition and all the children entered. We got, oh, 200 entries maybe. So they ended up looking really smart and nice. So then we had to think, what should we do next? So we thought we could have a little garden in front of each one and that would reflect the theme of the picture in the mural. So we did that and that was good fun. And then I heard about a competition that we could enter. And so we entered that and to our absolute astonishment, we won first prize and we got 800 pounds, which was a lot of money. And that really set us going. And at the same time, I heard about eco schools, which is really a worldwide thing now. In those days, there weren't so many schools in this area who had won an eco schools award. So we, we went for that and we got it. And that meant that we were invited to talk about our experiences in various places, at conferences, at workshops, at teachers' meetings. So we began to develop quite a big network of contacts. And we were invited to become part of the Manchester Environmental Education Network, which was a great step forward because that took us into a wider area of work and gave us lots of ideas and we began to attract visitors. We had visitors from Sweden, from Brazil, from Spain, um, Germany, all came from far and wide. In fact, um, emboldened by that, we thought we'd try for another big competition, which is called the Ashton Awards. Um, and that's run every year, well, it was run every year, I don't know if it still is, for schools. And that's all about environmental um, energy use, uh, to try and uh, be aware of recycled energy, that kind of thing. And we were absolutely thrilled to win that time. And so that was £15,000. And it just so happened that the person giving the prize, awarding the prizes, was Al Gore. So he was in the country. Um, that led to a few things. I was invited to go on some training uh, with Al Gore. He's got a climate um, project, which is to try and spread the word about climate change. So that was something I did for a few years. And um, also, um, we met some people there from the Commonwealth and they invited us to go to the Commonwealth Institute in London to take some pupils to do a presentation there. So we went down there the following year. So we really we just grew from such a small, small beginning. And if that parent had not said the word mural, I don't no, we would have done something, but it would not have grown to this enormous extent that it did. And it's just been a wonderful journey from that start um, way back in 1997. During my career Wood Hayes. Um, after many years I was trying to cope with everything myself and realised through having a period of ill health where I had to be off school how much well-being is so important to everyone within a school community not just the adults, the children, the parents and it was me being ill myself and beginning to look after myself that I realised that we had to bring some of these practices into school we began to work with a lady called Professor Janine Go, who had written a beautiful book called The Enchanted Child. And we actually performed this with our children at Gorton Monastery. And within it, it starts off with a child saying, I'm bored, because they weren't on the electrical devices and, and the overstimulation that children have, when really we need to encourage children to be mindful and just to sit as I'm doing here now, listening to the sounds of the children, listening to a car going by, appreciating the beauty of nature around us and being in the present moment and how important that is. Leo DiCaprio in his book, in his film The Eleventh Hour, 
He recognised that children at the age of 11 knew 150 advertising logos but didn't know the names of birds, trees, animals and it was this fact that made us think about developing our school grounds so that we now have five outdoor classrooms. This one is the Secret Garden, the funds for which were um, raised when we came first in the country for environmental cleanliness and David Bellamy came to the school and gave us £8,000 and with that we created this wonderful area. Um, I've already spoken about the project The Enchanted T Child with Dr Janine Go. but an enchanted child, if we describe them, what is that? It's a child delighted by the world around them. They notice, appreciate and are connected to all aspects of life. They are amazed by their bodies, which they treat with respect. They are enraptured by the power of their minds and all they can achieve. They live from their hearts and love to care and share and recognise the importance of community and working for the greater good. They look at nature with wonder and acknowledge the interconnection of everything. Excited by their own potential, they are in awe of life the world and the universe. Our secret garden. We have a beautiful pond where the children can study um, our wildlife, newts, frogs, tadpoles. We have a hedgehog home, we have an insect hotel and the children each time they come in it changes. When the seasons change the whole environment changes. Children can look at art in here, recently doing an Andy Goldsworthy project, literacy, poetry, science, or even just on our simple little benches, sitting and being mindful, listening to the aeroplane going past, listening to other children, homing in on the insects, looking and observing and seeing the things that they don't normally see when they're so busy in their lives. At Wood Hayes, we've begun to see the connection with peace of mind when children are immersed in nature. This beautiful plaque was made uh, as a joint collaboration project with Altrincham College of Art and our Year 6 pupils. Each pottery piece, um, at this end we had pieces connected to nature and then at the other end going into science. So it's that wonderful connection between nature and science. And then we have of course the six major faith symbols here so that the children and parents who queue up here before they come into nursery know exactly what we are about at Wood Hayes. In 2007, amazingly, we came first in the Ashton Awards um, for energy conservation and we received our prize from Al Gore, the former Vice President of the United States of America at the Royal Geographic Society in London. We were very proud, but we also received £14,000, which allowed us to buy some more solar panels and also to establish something which had been a dream for a while, a labyrinth. And a labyrinth, it's open to the community, and as it says here, it's, it's trying to meet the needs of user-friendly spirituality. Even if people aren't attached to a faith nowadays, there's a need for something in their lives, a purpose in their lives. Uh, a labyrinth in years gone by was part of a pilgrimage, so it's associated with many faiths. But there's also a process that by walking it, many children believe it will help them solve their problems. And as we know, what you think can affect what actually happens within your life. The children walk the labyrinth, if they're in a bad mood, by the time they get to the centre they have relaxed. And it's different, it's um, different to a maze where you lose yourself. Within the labyrinth, you're led to the centre so you relax. And it activates left, right side of the brain, the creative side of the brain. 
Uh, we've had many ceremonies within here, one in 2008, where we had a representative from each different faith within school who walked and said a prayer for peace at the centre. September the 21st is International Day of Peace and each year the children come to the peace tree and they reflect the idea that Buddhist monks have of Buddhist prayer flags. They think of their intention for world peace and they tie a ribbon around the tree and as the ribbons disintegrate within the year all those thoughts, all those wishes, all those dreams cascade around the world. This area is also a Beatrix Potter wood and before and after school, as children are waiting, they run around excitedly and they just use this area without realising the spiritual implications that it has upon their bodies as they walk the labyrinth. Daily happiness makes the world a better place. When you see a rainbow, remember God is love. Doves are like peace. Peace is in you, whatever you look like, wherever you're from. War is no more, but peace is more. I wish that peace was everywhere. Love is like a blanket wrapped around you. I wish there were, there were triple rainbows and everyone would be happy. My name's Alison Sargent and I'm a holistic therapist who works in the Rainbow Room at Woodhay School in this beautiful room. The idea of the Rainbow Room is that the children, uh, any children that, that need to come into the Rainbow Room for a little bit of help with perhaps coping strategies within the classroom or at home, can come into the Rainbow Room and we do reflexology with them, which is foot massage to help them relax. Um, we do lots of calming strategies, we have music in the background, we use relaxation and meditation techniques. And the idea is, is that sometimes children are so um, uptight about various things, no matter what it is that, that's, that they feel uncomfortable about, but they come in here and through the relaxation, they're able to just let some of that stress go. And sometimes it leads to them opening up about things that perhaps are worrying them, or uh, maybe in the classroom there, there are certain things that they find very, very difficult that can lead to frustration, perhaps sometimes anger outbursts. Um, so the idea is, is that we, we help them with relaxation strategies, not just in the rainbow room, because the idea is, is that they take these strategies with them back to the classroom, back to home, out in the playground, out in the big wide world, so that they actually feel as if they've got more self-assurance about themselves to deal with situations that perhaps are sometimes challenging. Um, the children can be referred by uh, parents, by the, the, the staff. Uh, sometimes a child might be a little bit upset about something that might have happened as a one-off during the day. And we can bring them into the rainbow room and just allow them to have that sense of calm and peace, time out, just to, just to resettle and perhaps just to, to go over some of the things that they've been upset about and then have the strategies that they can then take away to, uh, to help them. You know, it, to me, this is a bit of a missing piece of the jigsaw in the education system. I'm a retired teacher. I've been through the system as a pupil and a teacher. And this school is absolutely fantastic as, as really taking on board the health and well-being aspects because, you know, like we've said, without that, a child is not going to access some of the more difficult things, whereas if they're actually much calmer, much fl more flowing, things won't be quite as challenging and they will actually just naturally access the gifts that they've got within anyway. Um, so yeah, that's why I do it and I love it. <laughs> so, and I love being here because they are so, everybody's so responsive to it, the staff, the children, the parents. So yeah, it's good. <laughs>
music, what we have is about collaboration, not competition. All, all the way throughout the school, we have uh, three or four music um, concerts per year where anyone who can play the piano or can play an instrument uh, gets a chance to perform in front of their parents and in front of the whole school. Uh, the choir is uh, 60 strong, plus another 30 in the infants. We had to split them up because they were just too much. And as soon as we went to the young voices at the Manchester Arena, the children flocked in. And now we have to have extra people in just to get the children out at the end of the day because there are so many people in the choir. Um, we had, uh, in the pop medley, I think we had 18 soloists, one after another, all the people who were dying to do it. Now for them to perform in front of their friends, in front of the, the uh, parents, in front of the governors, it's a big, big deal. And nothing's ever wrong. If, if you make a mistake in music, it's gone. You can't do anything about it. Uh, in our music lessons, we collaborate to compose, to do rhythmic work in solos, duets, uh, quartets, quintets, as much as you need. Um, the enthusiasm for music here is enormous. I would put music into every lesson. I would sing the register or something like that. And like we said before, the maths that we do, we learn fractions in year five by doing fractions of a, of a note. Uh, a crotchet was a quarter, semi breve is a whole, minims two, semi quavers, demi semi quavers, they all didn't realise that they were doing maths because they were creating their own. And when they wrote their own, it's just a code, when they write their own code about the note values, then I play it on the piano, we record it, and they've got their own comp composition all the way through. We're an Artsmark Gold School at the moment. We're trying our best to get Artsmark Platinum, um, we've, which is arts, music, drama, dance. But the music side of it and the art side of it and the drama side of it are absolutely sailing high. A little bit more DT and it's, it's all a level playing field and it's all not your academic. The social enrichment is huge, um, the ability to find their inner feelings is huge and the fact that there's no right and wrong answer is massive. Okay. <laughs> for our end of year production. Yeah. Shakespeare Rock. Shakespeare Rock. Yeah. Right. So it's lots of little Shakespeare plays, like snippets of Shakespeare plays. Right. So we've got Macbeth, um, we've got Romeo and Juliet, painters. Yeah. A scene where Will and the Queen get sort of swarmed by paparazzi painters and lots of other stuff. <laughs> When the new school opened in September 2011, uh, we had virtually a blank canvas. We had white walls everywhere. And we decided to um, commission local artists to paint murals and design murals with the children. But we also decided to put quotes, uh, famous quotes from very famous people, but also from people who perhaps um, ch the children might not have known anything about their lives and backgrounds, which we make sure that they do during their uh, time at Wood Hayes. But education is the most powerful weapon which you can use to change the world, and we passionately believe that. We've been involved over many years with the British Council and have been, we've applied successfully for bids which enabled um, our teachers to exchange with teachers in Cape Town and Durban, South Africa as part of the Afro Twin project. Um, a wonderful project. When I actually went over to Durban, we um, were lucky enough to go to a, a school in a township and we'd taken some funding and sent some funding over and a small building at the back had, with our funding had been transferred into a little wood haze and it was used as a nursery in the morning and adult education in the afternoon. We were very, very proud. When the African teachers came over, um, we 
uh, were in contact with the May Peace Prevail on Earth project and they produce flags from the whole of the African continent and we brought them into school and an older child and younger child walked with each flag and symbolically, for example, Libya said, may peace prevail in Libya to each of the countries, I think there were 52 um, countries in um, Africa. And again, we've got some lovely examples um, of work here and projects undertaken with both countries. Part of the British Council, we also uh, completed the Comenius project with Latvia, Turkey, Spain, and our own country. And all teachers from all four countries visited all the different countries together. And Mr. Byrne, our music teacher, he actually composed um, a song, uh, the Comenius song, which all four countries uh, sang together. Again, wonderful for geography, bringing geography to life. So just drink in your indigo rays and your indigo That's all you got to do. It's all that's asked of you. Peace is the key to all things good. Peace is something that comes from your heart. The peace marble cuts through all forms of prejudice and celebrates what makes us different from each other. It is a vision for the future. Wearing the marble is a promise to help create a better world represents friendship, respect and peace between the faith and all people in our world. If people ask you what it means, tell them about it. It's an honour to be here amongst you all this morning. It's uh, been a very moving experience for me. I've had pleasure to be at this school before and a lot has changed since I've been here, but then again, nothing's changed. And what I mean by that, a lot of the infrastructure has changed since I was here, but the people haven't. It's a wonderful, wonderful atmosphere. This, for me personally, goes beyond a school. This is a community. It's absolutely wonderful. When I was in the garden before, I felt so peaceful. I could have just come and sat and enjoyed my time there. And so if you ever see me sat there in your school garden, please forgive me, but I find it such a lovely, lovely place to be. It does mean so much to be with you. And thank you so much for everything you do, Ed, and your staff. You are absolutely wonderful people, and what you bring together at this school, well, your reputation goes before you. But finally, I'd just like to thank the children, because without you and the way that you behave and everything that you do in this school, it wouldn't be the community that it is. So thank you so, so much. It is an absolute delight to be here. And I'll leave you with this. We welcome children from many different countries and cultural backgrounds and two of our families were from Japan and the children in year four were studying uh, the Second World War and the Japanese families came to me and said well are you telling the children how the war ended with the atomic bombs in Japan and we discussed this at length and did decide to discuss this with our children and part of the project our Japanese families were telling us the story of Sadako. And Sadako, who was a young girl 
who um, died from the um, from the aftermath of the uh, of Hiroshima at the age of 12 with the cancers that she developed. And she had a passionate belief that if you fold a thousand origami peace cranes, that peace will come to the world. And so our Japanese families came into school and began to fold the peace cranes. And we have got hundreds and hundreds of them in school. They've now gone back to Japan and sent us some beautiful books and some origami paper for us to continue the project. And we are hoping again part of geography, part of history, but is to send a string of peace cranes to schools in war zones all over the world. On this display here, um, there's a picture actually of Lama Abbey Tulka Ramplache, who was the, um, the Buddhist monk who came and blessed our Zen outside. And this is one of our projects reflecting the rainbow. I retire in July of this year and I'll hand over to Mr John Beasley who actually was a newly qualified teacher um, for me here and, um, and I'm very proud to say he went on to become a deputy head and then an acting head in another school and he takes, I hand the baton to him ceremoniously for September 2017 and I wish him every look for the future and I know that he's going to do an incredible job. I'm John Beasley, the new head teacher of Woodhays Primary School, and Woodhays holds such a special place in my heart. It's it's where my journey began back in 2002 as a newly qualified teacher. I spent four fantastic years here, and it gave me that opportunity to really nurture my leadership skills. And when given the opportunity to return here, I obviously jumped to the chance. This is a very special place to work. The, the leaders, the teachers, the parents and, and the pupils are so special and I'm really excited about working at this school and taking this school and building on the legacy, the fantastic legacy that, that Mrs Roberts has already established here. Being part of the recent Ofsted inspection really gave me that unique opportunity to see this school at its heart working so passionately for every single child, working with the leaders and observing those leaders, seeing how they know this school intrinsically and that they're able to uh, build on every opportunity for every child, nurturing every single skill and giving every child the opportunity to thrive uh, at, a, at an amazing school. From my previous school, uh, a large three-form entry school in, in Chalton, uh, we, we've established rights respecting, which is part of the UNICEF Conventions of the Child, and that's been a real powerful tool to, to embrace the, the rights of every single child and we've used that in my previous school to um, develop em ambassador uh, skills and, and really develop the opportunities for every single child and looking at this school and observing that what this school has already established I feel that it would be a, a really key next step for the school and building on that legacy as I said, that Mrs. Mrs. Roberts has already established here. So the rights and respect thing is is a is a, a new thing I'd like to bring into the school, and I think it, it would match perfectly uh, and build on those firm foundations that have already been established. The children here are so articulate; they're so passionate about education, and by tapping into those rights, it would just give them that that further platform to build on uh, as ambassadors for the school and, 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 as, and as future leaders. Um, I, I'm a firm believer of, of within a school creating those opportunities for children to lead by example and being given those opportunities to make change and have, have their say on, on the, the things that are going on within school and, and, and nurturing the, the future development of the school. We've involved the, the children in, in rewriting a number of our policies uh, and, and that is key because then they have that ownership and they have they, they, they have that tangible connectivity to, to the school. It is their school and we're here for them and we need to work in partnership. And I think the rights for respecting is a powerful, powerful tool to, to bring this and, and embed it uh, within this school. A few weeks ago we underwent an Ofsted inspection under the new framework where any aspect of outstanding is extremely difficult to achieve. The old 
So the new good is the old outstanding. I'm so proud to say that alongside my deputy, Sarah McMichael, and the team, we achieved outstanding in behaviour, outstanding in leadership and management, and outstanding in all the wonderful aspects of British values, social and moral aspects, all our interfaith work, and I so sort of just feel that we're leaving on a high that I know is going to be taken into the future.